Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. I hope everybody is doing good today. So if you guys do not know, once again, Brian McKnight is getting drug up and down social media. They have been lighting him up for the past 24 hours, so much so that it made the shade room. So what's going on is this. R&B singer Brian McKnight, who's been in the industry for over three decades now, honey, is facing backlash for not only gifting his stepdaughter a brand new car, but he also basically basically stated that he didn't become a girl dad until he became a father to his stepdaughter. And that has bothered a lot of people. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this post that's going viral all over social media and on Twitter, he posted this back in 2022. So it wasn't like he posted it yesterday. So I'm not sure why this is going viral again. Um, I know people have had a lot of issues with Brian McKnight over the years, but a lot of the stuff that people are posting, they've been up. He's been feeling this way. I remember doing a video on him back in 2019 when he had a bunch of drama with his children and his biological black children came out and said that they basically feel like Brian abandoned them. He was doing nothing for them. He refused to talk to them. Brian also came out defending himself, and he said that these kids were grown. He was there for them. He never missed a day of child support, but that he was tired of taking care of grown folks. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Brian McKnight accused of abandoning his biological kids after buying his stepdaughter a new BMW. The brand new BMW that R&B artist Brian McKnight bought for his stepdaughter was announced on his social media pages. 2018 saw the marriage of Brian and Leilani Maria Mendoza at the renowned Ojeca Castle in upstate New York. The couple exchanged vows in a lavish ceremony. The bride wore a stunning dress with 50,000 Swarovski crystals on it. Since their marriage, Brian has assisted Leilani in raising her two children from a previous relationship, Jack McPhee, 20, and Julia, 23, respectively, and every time he gets there, he spoils her and the kids. Leilani's pregnancy was just revealed by the couple, and the entire family is excited about the new arrival. People on Black Twitter are not pleased with Brian's apparent preference for his stepchildren above his own children. The Neighborhood Talks Instagram page posted Brian's post about the new BMW after he reportedly blocked a follower for encouraging him to mend his family in the comments. One person responded, saying, People see a fraction of someone's life and want to provide an unsolicited opinion, so there are the repercussions of such acts another person objected, blocked. It's none of our business, but the fact that he purposefully posts his stepchildren in his bio as if his biological children don't exist is concerning. According to a third social media user, that is so nasty. Brian has previously refuted claims that he was a deadbeat parent who spent years ignoring his biological children. In a 2019 video that has since surfaced, he discussed what it's like to be there for his kids' lives. I have never been late on paying child support in my entire life. I've never done anything wrong to my children. I've always been there. Whether they heeded my advice or not, I was always there. I have always served as both a sounding board and the one who had to assist them in realizing any goals they had in mind. He gave them everything he lacked in the hopes that they would be grateful. He also said that he should have felt bad for entitling his kids and showing them tough love when they were younger. BJ was 25 and Nico was 22 when I ceased taking care of everything for them, according to McKnight at the time. And I didn't just stop talking to them entirely. That took place much later. Now, my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I have always been the sounding board, and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it, because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do, and I know I am guilty of that. 
um, for whatever reasons, I'm guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. And I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years. But you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. And they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, Miko's on there, you know, taking a big puff, of, which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now, let's go to the part where... All right, so you guys just saw his response. And like I said, the response was longer. But I remember this controversy a few years ago. Well, now people are combing through his social media pages and they're finding even more things that are really bothering a lot of people. One of the things is that recently, Brian McKnight announced the birth of his new son. Now, this baby was born in January. And him and his wife, Leilani, had been trying for a baby for years. And finally, the baby was born. And we find out that the baby is basically named Brian McKnight Jr. Jr. Because he already has an older son named Brian McKnight. And a lot of people are really upset about this. And they're saying, you know, why are you naming your new baby Brian McKnight when you already have a son named Brian McKnight, and then come to find out he also has a grandson named Brian McKnight, Brian McKnight the third or whatever. So a lot of people are really disturbed by that, that they feel like he's trying to start back at one as if the first Brian McKnight Jr. doesn't even exist. On top of that, he also had in his bio that he is Leilani's husband. He has it that he's the father of Julia Jack Kihoa Mateo and Brian Kainoa Makoa. McKnight Jr. <laughs> um, I think the wife is Hawaiian or something like that. But um, so a lot of people are calling him out for that. And these are just some of the comments that people are saying on Twitter. These are some of the posts. I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw some of the posts. And here goes another post that he wrote. He says this, Jules, I became a girl dad because of you, and I couldn't have asked for a better daughter. Visiting you on campus and seeing how happy you are living in this beach house with all of your friends for your senior year reminded us both of how proud we are of the woman you have become and the incredible student you continue to be. Here's to you, Jules, the perfect daughter I always wanted. That is a huge slap in the face. Um, I don't care how bad your other biological daughter is or how much you don't want to deal with her. 
that might be why she's acting up and not being the so-called perfect daughter because she does not have that male energy, that male influence and the love of her biological father in her life like this young girl Jules has been so blessed to have. You know what I'm saying? Because he treats Jules like that's his biological daughter. He sees no difference in her. He spoils her. And I, I can only imagine what the biological daughter feels when you're saying things like, I became a girl dad because of you and you're the perfect daughter I've always wanted. I feel like he's one of those types that likes to throw rocks and hides his hands, that he throws a lot of daggers um, via social media so that way his other kids can see it. And I think it's not right. You know, it's one thing to congratulate her, and I'm not trying to knock these kids, Jack and Jules, because they're innocent in this, right? They, they can't control who their mother marries. They seem to be good kids, good students, you know, so bravo to them for that. But... Don't use them as daggers towards your other children. It's not okay and it's not fair. At the end of the day, you should be showing all your children love and admiration and encouraging them to do the right thing. Encouraging them to be good people as opposed to knocking them and uplifting solely her, Jack, or your new baby. I just think the whole situation is unfortunate, but you see this a lot. You know, and I've talked about this before that unfortunately some men, it doesn't even matter their background, that once they are done with the relationship or however they feel about the mother, when the mother conceived, if they were in a relationship, it was a one night stand, a lot of men will treat their children based on the feelings for the mother. Is it right? Absolutely not, but it's the truth. And this is why as women, because we're the ones putting our bodies at risk and our wombs at risk, you have to be very, very selective and very careful with who you have children with because some of these men out here, not all, of course, are twisted. And they will take out their frustrations, their anger that they have towards you onto your children who don't deserve it because no child acts to be here. So I'm, I'm just kind of disappointed to see this. I was hoping that after all the drama that blew up back in 2019, that he would amend it fence with his other children and, you know, try to create a happier home, you know, a more of a blended family, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I pose the question off to you guys. How do you guys feel about all this drama with Brian McKnight that's once again resurfacing? Are you shocked to see this? Are you not shocked to see it? And do you feel like this situation goes even deeper than family dynamics and it also plays into colorism, featureism, and things like that? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments thank you so much for watching this video and i will talk to y'all later deuces if you want the latest news in the streets join us sentiment for the tea breaking news with integrity so sir your friends and your family it's the lovely tv show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely tv show be sure to share like and subscribe